my name is Fiona MacDonald. I am a head teacher of um, a TAS faculty, which is Technology and Applied Studies at St Luke's Grammar School at DY. In the TAS faculty, we um, project work is the main focus. And um, we do a product, system or an environment, and it's always supported by a design portfolio. And they've always been a paper portfolio. My name is Alma LaRoe and I'm Head of Information Services at St Luke's Grammar School in DY. The main reason we started teaching using online tools or I guess in this slightly blended approach of face-to-face -face and online components is to enable students to think outside of the square. What might be also worth mentioning is that um, in Year 7 Technology um, students are working on projects that involve a lot of hands-on work, so a lot of tactile um, handling of materials. So what the teachers really wanted was for students to have the time in the classroom to really get engaged with those materials, but then to also um, make their learning visible through the online um, sites and online portfolios where they're commenting, discussing, um, doing a lot of that work in their own time in a way, so that the lesson time is not spent typing and thinking and uh, thinking about reflecting on the process for the entire duration of the lesson. Um, not that that wouldn't be happening in the lesson, but just so that there's a lot more time devoted to that practical component. We decided to go with Google Sites in the end for the flexibility and um, adaptability of the site and the ability to uh, for students to share with each other, with their teachers, to embed other elements of the Google Apps platform which we have available. I guess we were thinking if the students could use a tool that they had complete control over, would we give them that and what would that tool be? And that was Google Sites for us. With all of our projects, um, the students do a um, design portfolio. And um, the e-portfolio includes um, pages which show our design process. I'll go through quickly the site with you, the title page. Then they go through an action time plan, which they do in a table format. So they project their actions, their ID generation, where they um, do some mind mapping. Um, they do storyboard and concept boards. And they do some drawings and sketches of their ideas and then um, they come up with their final solutions. Um, what's important, of course, is um, their final evalu evaluation and their learning um, assessment. And this is where they're able to collaborate with their um, fellow peers and their other student members so that they can give comments and feedback on, on their site and also um, learn about the process as well. The pre-flight checklist uh, for us would definitely involve that planning time, um, getting the team together, talking about um, what the purpose is, what we're trying to achieve, making sure that we've got some planning time and then considering the tools, making sure that the tools are not driving the pedagogy but the pedagogy is actually supporting, supported by the tools that we're going to use and then covering those technical components, getting the help from anybody you need at that crucial initial planning stage. Also making sure that there is a solution for what to do when you run into technical problems because you don't want that to take away from the learning and the problem solving in terms of the design process and the pedagogy and the outcomes that are actually behind. We've had um, to, to get our teacher skills up and running to, for the e-portfolios. Uh, we've had to have meetings, we've had to have demonstrations. I've been able to um, access the, the help of our, um, an IT specialist. There is certainly a bit of extra workload to consider, particularly in the planning stage. If you're not used to um, marking online work, or some teachers don't like marking on the screen, because they're just not used to that practice, then that can be an added um, problem, um, or I guess a complication, um, something to consider, I guess. Instead of having the online environment being an extra, we want it to, to be embedded an embedded practice, a transformation of, of something that they're already doing. Certain teachers may have decided to um, approach it in a way that allows students to work more 
uh, to deliver a lot of the instruction using the online component um, where the students come to the lessons um, to problem solve. So they might be doing quite a little bit of a flipped learning approach if you like. Um, but other, other teachers, depending on their students' needs, might be doing a lot more of the face-to-face um, -face, um, instruction with those online components in the classroom being discussed or demoed um, or um, modelled, if you like. Just to really be upfront with students um, in terms of what the purpose is. What is the benefit? What is the purpose? Why are we doing this? And how to, how to get their skills um, up in a fairly quick amount of time so that they're not uh, feeling the pressure of trying to master a particular skill as well as the course content, if you like, so that the technology doesn't get in the way. And we really consciously wanted to make sure that that doesn't happen um, and try to provide as much in-class support as possible. Oh, the benefits to teaching this way is that it's an exciting way. The students are, are really, really engaged uh, because they, they use this technology at home. They're embracing and they're um, linking to what's actually happening in, in the world today. Uh, the discussion worked because like we could see everyone's answers and then we could learn from them and like change our answer and it's, like discuss with the class. The differences between working online and working face to face is um, like some pe kids like talking and speaking out and sharing their results where there's some uh, like some kids prefer saying things not face to face and that way you can really get everyone's opinion including maybe kids who don't really like aren't that confidence like pub face to face speaking and then um, also, you can access everyone, like you can learn from others' mistakes and um, instead of individually going out and asking everyone in your class, what do you think of this, you can just put it out there and they can give you your comments. Teachers could suddenly see every minor detail that the student was working on at any given point in time. Um, they could then pose comments and questions about their work that you wouldn't normally do in a physical form with a portfolio that might go home or stay in the classroom. Um, and I guess to ask them also um, about their fears and, their, um, and what they might possibly be excited about. Just to spend a little bit of time um, brainstorming that would, is really helpful because at least that way you know exactly where the students are coming from, who might need some extra help and who might need um, the um, the online component possibly designed a little bit differently. Well, the advice I'd give the new teacher would be maybe like tell us what we're going to do so we like know what we're trying to do and then she can also help us with it and show us what to do and stuff. Brief them, brief them on like what how to use everything because it saves time later on. Uh, make sure you know everything about all the apps because that will because once you uh, different apps do different things and then you can sort of use them together to make and it comes in really handy when you're trying to make a project so yep that's my advice and my comment yep. I, I think it has been a very worthwhile experience um, and not only seeing students um, tackle something that they haven't worked with before but also seeing staff um, I guess work in new ways with, with the students and um, develop new ways of thinking about approaching teaching and learning. We still always keep learning. We all, the scope of the program, we still start to, um, we still need to keep our skills going.